To make this bag, you'll need the following materials. Any weight 4 yarn, a size 5 crochet hook, scissors, and a button. To start out this project, you'll want to make a slip knot and chain an odd number of stitches. For my bag, I did 27. Once you've chained the desired number of stitches, you'll chain one more so you can turn and do a row of single crochet. The first row is always the most difficult because of the chain, so don't get discouraged. You'll now want to do 5 more rows of single crochet and have a total of 6 rows of single crochet. This next step is completely optional, but I decided that I wanted my bag to have stripes, so I'll now be showing you how to do a color change. You'll want to start out by making a slip knot in the other color and leaving one stitch left. So you'll start the stitch for single crochet, you'll yarn over and pull through once, then you will use color two to pull through the remaining two loops. Now that color 2 is attached, you can complete the next row of single crochet by chaining 1 and single crocheting all the way across while hiding color 1 under color 2. On top of the first chain that you made, you'll want to do 24 rows of single crochet. For my bag, I did 6 rows of single crochet in color 1, 2 rows in color 2, then I repeated the pattern of 3 rows in color 1, followed by 2 rows of color 2, twice. I then changed to color 1 to do 6 more rows before switching to double crochet. You may choose however many colors you want, whether you choose to do each row in a different color or no stripes at all, your bag is completely customizable. However you choose to do it, in the end, you will want to have 24 rows of single crochet on top of the initial chain that you made. Here I'm showing you one way to secure color changes in your work. For this stripe, I just left the ends of the yarn from when I first tied it on and when I cut it off, and I'm simply tying them on the side of the piece. There's multiple ways to secure your work when you do a color change. Another is to hide the tail of the string that you cut along with the other color that you're already working over. However, if you're a beginner, that may get confusing and you might want to start out by just cutting them and tying them on the side of your project. It's completely up to you how you choose to do this. Now we have completed 24 rows of single crochet in total. Next, you'll want to do 10 rows of double crochet. I did my double crochets in color 1, 
but it's completely up to you however you want to do your colors. After the 10 rows of double crochet, I did 11 more rows of single crochet in color 1. Then switching into color 2, I did 11 rows of single crochet in color 2. Based on my bag being 27 stitches, in the next row I did 11 single crochet, then chained 5, skipping the 5 stitches in the middle, then finished off the row in the rest of the single crochet. In the next row, I did one more row of single crochet in color two, and going into the chain, you'll just want to do the single crochets as you did when you went into the first chain that you made, starting off the entire bag. It's the same process, and that will create your buttonhole. Seaming the bag together is pretty simple because it's all one panel. Firstly, you will want to be sure that you are creating the seam on the side of the panel that you want to be the inside of your bag. Fold the opposite side of the panel from the buttonhole up to the desired size of your bag. I folded mine to three rows of single crochet before I changed to color two. You can fold the flap to wherever you'd like it to land and simply slip stitch across the sides of the bag. Then, to finish it off, flip the bag inside out and use a darning needle to attach the button to the bag in a spot where it can fit through the buttonhole. Once you've added the button, this is what the completed bag should look like. 